in this video we're going to see block diagram basics and block diagram algebra okay to start with we'll take simple elements the basic elements for block diagram the basic elements are of three types one is the block diagram of a system can be represented with a box okay with transfer function written inside it okay let's say the transfer function of the system is g of s and say the input is r of s and the output is c of s okay this is the this is how we represent a block diagram of a particular system okay and coming to the next basic elements for block diagram representations are summing points or differencing points the way we represent summing points are like this okay if this is one of the input signal x1 and this is another input signal x2 say and we want to sum these two signals and get a resultant signal uh, summation of this so this is how we represent a summing component in block diagrams and a differencing component can be represented like this okay plus minus where we want to get the difference between x1 and x2 signals as the output okay here x1 minus x2 this is how we'll have this is a summing section and this is a differencing section okay and the other basic component or a section in black diagrams we see is takeoff points okay if a signal is traveling in this direction or propagating in this direction and we want to tap the signal and use that signal in another section of the block diagram then the way we represent that is we take a point say we sample or take the point from there and the direction in which we represent is this indicating the signal is traveling in this direction okay this is how a takeoff point is represented to write here this is known as a block diagram okay and these two in respect to are called as summing oops, and differencing components for signals and this is called as a takeoff point okay these are the basic building blocks to actually draw a block diagram for a system okay a complex block diagram here what we have shown is a very basic block diagram kind of i mean to represent the transfer function of the system inside and input signal as r of s and output signal c of s as we have seen basic building blocks are components in drawing a block diagram of a system uh, now we will see block diagram algebra or rules of block diagrams and its algebra now first let's take a case where we have combining blocks in cascade okay when we have blocks in cascade let's say now we have two blocks say one with gain g1 and another with gain g2 okay now let's assume the input signal is x1 okay and the output signal is x2 now we want to reduce this cascaded blocks into a single block diagram okay now if you see this intermediate signal which is coming out of this first block which will be which can be written as g1 times x1 and x2 will be equal to g1 times g2 times x1 right so x2 can be written as g g1 times g2 times 
times x1. So we can represent this block diagram equivalently like this g1 times g2. Okay. And representing the same way x1 here and x2 here. Sorry, x2 here. And x2 will be equal to g1 times g2 times x1. Okay. This will be the equivalent for this particular block diagram. And now taking the second one, uh, this is about moving a summing point after a block. So basically, if you if we have a summing point, let's say, okay, and let's say let's take a plus here uh, and here, let's take plus or minus, okay, then. If this is going to a particular block, okay, and in this rule we are going to see moving this summing point, this summing point here to after this block which has a gain g. Now, how do we represent this equivalently is, let's take this is signal x1 and this is x2. The signal present at this point will be x1 plus or minus x2 and the output signal will be g times x1 plus or minus g times x2 and these input signals and output signals should not change and the interior things these blocks can be shifted that's what in this rule we are going to shift this summing point after the block if you want to do that let's say we have this block like this and we're going to shift that summing point beyond this block. So we have a summing point here now. Okay. This is plus and this point will be plus or minus similar to that. Now the inputs and outputs should not change. That is the whole point. Okay. We have x1 here and the output, the output we need is g times x1 plus or minus g times x2. We're supposed to get this. In order to get this, what are we going to do? Okay, at this particular point, the signal will be x1 times g. Okay, so we're getting this x1 times g here. Now we want x2 times g here. So x2 we are giving one input, but this needs to be multiplied with the gain here. So we place this block here. Okay, so that the signal which we get here will be x2 times g. So the signal which you get at the output will be g times x1 plus g times x2. Okay, now the third rule okay if we have a block like this and if we have a summing point at the at this particular place plus and plus or minus and if we have x2 coming here and the output is here okay let's take x1 here at the input now if you want to shift this summing point before this block then how do we do that okay Let's take the summing point being present here, okay? Plus, and this is plus or minus. And the block is here, this G. And the input is X1, and the signal here will be equal to X1 plus or minus, whatever signal comes here, okay? Fine, and now, Let's take this x2 by leaving some space to determine what should be there. And now output will be g times x1 plus or minus. Let's give some space g times space x2. We want to figure out what is that point. Okay. In this case, if you see g times x1 plus or minus, we have x2, right? So in order to have here x2, here we should get a term 1 over g. It means the signal coming here should be 1 over g times x2. So we need to have a block here with a gain of 1 over g, right? And this will be x2. So these two diagrams will be equivalent. Taking the next one, say the fourth rule, where now we come to the takeoff points. Now if we have a takeoff point before a block, now let's say the signal we're giving here is x1 and we have a block here let's say with gain g and this is the output okay the signal we are going to we are tapping is x1 and we are taking it in this direction now the point is we want to shift this particular takeoff point 
after this block G. In that case, the block diagram, how it is going to be changed is G is here and we are going to tap the signal here. If that is the case, input is X1, okay, the output will be G times X1 and we are actually sampling G times X1. But when we take output here from this particular point, we are supposed to have X1. It means we need a system with this transfer function 1 over G. Okay, so that G times X1 times 1 over G will cancel the G terms there. So we'll have X1. This is the equivalent block diagram. If you see uh, a block and if we have a takeoff point after this block, okay, now let's take X1 is the input and we are actually sampling G times X1 here, which is the output. So this will be X1. Now we want to shift this particular point before this block. In that case, how does the block diagram look? Okay. Now I'm taking this take a point here and input is X1 and G is here. Okay. Now the output is G times X1. Okay. Previously here it was G times X1. Now if you tap it here directly and take, we'll have X1. Okay. But we need G times X1. In that case, we are supposed to have a block here with gain G. Okay, so we'll have G times X1. This is the equivalent figure for that. And now coming to the sixth one, if we have loops or let's say a feedback loop here, the way we represent feedback loop is plus here, plus or minus. Okay, and G and uh, take feedback uh, gain being H and if it gets feed, fed back let's take X1 is the input and X2 is the output okay now this X2 will be equals to G times let's take this as E okay a signal at this point so G times E now if you take this X2 X2 times H will be this B let's take this as B B equals G times Okay, E. Okay, let's uh, let's take this simple H times X two. Okay, now H times X two is B, and E will be equal to X one minus H times X two. And if we write this X two, X two will be equal to G times E, right? So E is G times uh, x1 minus h x2 right so x2 equals g times x1 minus g times h times x2 if you take that x2 that side x2 1 plus g times h equals to g times x1 now if you take x2 over x1 which is nothing but the output of the input will have g divided by 1 plus g h okay this is the resultant transfer function for this loop but here right we assumed only minus right but here we had plus or minus if you take here plus or minus when we take it this side it will have minus or plus in this case we will have minus or plus this minus is indicating for this positive feedback and the plus is indicating for this negative feedback okay the equivalent block diagram for this one will be g over 1 plus g h okay as the resultant block and the input will be x1 and here x2.